Welcome to Dexon Photography. In this video, we will take a look at files from the camera, the Leica MD Type 262. <clears throat> what I'm now going to do is to show you the images straight from the camera, so you have an idea of how the images look like. If you ever go for a Leica MD, that is the camera that doesn't have a display, but it's a digital camera. So it's a niche within the niche. And so this is a camera that not many people get their hands on. So I want to make a video for those people interested in it to give you a little bit of information about how do the images look like straight from the camera. Now this camera doesn't shoot JPEG only raw. So these are all DNG files from the Leica MD Type 262 that came out in 2016. So it's a couple of years old already. And the, every image is shot in auto white balance. There is no other option. And I first now want to scroll through these images so you get an overall idea of how the images look like in terms of color, because every image is shot in auto white balance. And also in terms of exposure, because I shot all these images in auto exposure, which means um, I put the aperture in. Where are we? I put the aperture in on the on the lens. Where have we been? Bum, bum, bum. I put the aperture on the lens and the ISO on the camera on the back. There's a wheel and then the shutter speed. The shutter speed is taken care of by the camera. So I shot all images with the 50 millimeter 1.4 Summilux lens and many images wide open to get a feeling. Can I actually focus wide open because all images uh, uh, the, the camera, the MD only shoots um, manually. So there is no autofocus. Uh, actually, all M cameras from Leica for over 60 years now, they are all with manual focus only. There is no autofocus. And so I have to focus manually, plus there is no screen. So I don't, I cannot check the files. And so what we now do is you see the images unedited straight from the camera. Some may be a little bit too bright, some may be a little bit too dark, but in general, I think the camera does a really great job at measuring the exposure and also the color. Most of the time, I think it's getting uh, really great images straight from the camera. So what I now am going to do is, now here you actually can see the camera. What I'm now going to do is we go into these images and I edit them. So you get a feeling of how good can you edit these files and how much can you change the colors and the, the, the editing parameters here, the attribute. So I took this camera with me to a variety of shootings. I, on my left here in Lightroom, I have my presets. Uh, you will find in the description below all these presets you can uh, get them, uh, you can buy them actually. And if you want images like this, if you want the result with the look, you can get the final result like I did here with the same presets pretty, pretty quickly. So the idea is to show you the images I took from a variety of moments. So here I was at a wedding. I only show you some of the images. And I wanted to see, can I use this camera actually for photographing real people uh, on a wedding, for example. Now here it says f1.7, but I'm pretty sure I shot at f1.4, wide open. I shot mostly at f1.4. So now let's, I think this image just as it is looks nice already. I can edit it just a little bit here and I think this would be pretty fine. Uh, and we could, we could leave it at, at that kind of. Or I could go through my presets here, maybe Coloria. And I think I got a nice result just like this without actually doing much. Or we can go to a black and white look and get a nice black and white image. I can copy that preset now to the next images. Maybe put a little bit off like this. And now all the next images will be edited in the same way. So actually, after having used this camera now for a couple of weeks, um, I think it's actually usable even on a wedding. Now I have to tell you, manual focusing, I'm new to it. I started it with Leica and I this is not my camera. I got it sent 
by Photo Görlitz, a photography store here in Germany, who is focused on Leica gear and who has a personal mission to uh, to spread the Leica <laughs> enthusiasm in the photography area. So he reached out to me and asked if I if there is any Leica camera I'd like to test. He'd uh, he he could send it to me, and this is how I came to the Leica MD. That was the one camera I always wanted to test, but it's so rare that there is no way for me to test it anywhere. The only way to test it would be to buy it, but thankfully, before I do it, I had a glimpse of how beautiful this camera shines. So thanks to Alexander Görlitz, the photography store. So here is my son. I photographed him as well. And I think I mostly shot also at f1.4 or maybe f2, but I I wanted to see can I use this camera wide open. That's what I wanted to see. Does it make sense to get a 51.4? Can I use it at f1.4? F or do I go with the 52.0 if I go the Leica way? Now I really like the images. I think these presets work really well. Uh, I've created these presets with Canon cameras, but I've tested them with uh, with the Hasselblad, I've tested them with the Fuji cameras, the X100V and X-Pro3 and X-T3. I've also tested them with the Sony a7 III. Uh, and so it, you can use them for any kind of camera, kind of. Now some images turn out too dark, uh, but most of the images turn out really, really on point, I believe. Uh, so when I look at an image like this, for example, or like this, um, just in terms of exposure. If it's too bright or too dark, I think it's it's totally fine. There are moments when you shoot into the light, so when the background is is, is lit and bright, then maybe the front may be too dark. Uh, but the sensor is so good that you can put it up and there is no problem at it. I'm shooting here at ISO 640. You, here, up here you see the settings. All images are shot with the 50 millimeter lens. And I really like the look that we can get with it. Let me let me select the preset, synchronize it. And when I now zoom in, uh, I think we get a really nice, nice image. And the focusing is also right. It's a really, it's really easy to focus these Leica cameras, the M camera. Uh, I didn't expect that. I was expecting that I needed much more experience, much more training to focus at open aperture. But I find that the the keeper rate in terms of focus, how many images are out of focus, how many images I actually got the focus where I wanted it, the keeper rate is very, very high. I ve kind of, I think over 80% I actually hit the point where I wanted to hit the focus. And I was shooting wide open most of the time to actually, I wanted to get the images out of focus. I wanted to fail to see where the ratio is. So if I take 10 images, how many were in focus and how many were off focus. So here, for example, I focus on the camera. So you, you see the camera. Let's put a preset over it. Maybe this one and copy it now to the other images to this. So here you got the camera in focus. And now on this image, you got me in focus. And you see, or you don't see, uh, actually what's on the lens anymore. So th th you see how shallow the depth of field is. Here you still can see kind of what's written here. And with the next image, there is no idea of what's written here. It's so shallow, it's just two centimeters away. And yet you no longer see what's what's actually on the lens. You can see if it's a 35 or a 50. And you have to control by, by manual focusing. So I just move this section here just a little bit to focus either on the lens or on my face. And I think the look of the files look really, really nice. There's a, such an ease to get to the final image. Now editing is something very personal and there are many ways and different, I think it's very subjective. So I can try to get normal colors or I try, can try to get very strange colors. Now I like to use this one, the Malerei preset for landscape. 
and I copy it to all the other images. And I think this works really well with landscape photos. And I totally can understand when somebody says, this is way too much, the colors are off. But I think it gives a really nice feeling. Uh, if I compare it to before and after, left is before and right is after. I think it gives a really nice look to these greens and the trees and the landscape. But it's very subjective. Some people may like it, some people say the colors are not natural and I think both are right. Uh, you can define your own style, for example, by the editing part. There are many ways in photography to go and editing is one of them. That is one way to differentiate yourself. Uh, I like to go with what I like. I try not to look at the outside and uh, doing your your own style, I think is the most easiest. So you always go for what feels right for you. When you start to ask yourself what other people would like, then you're always in doubt if you're right or wrong right now. Okay, so here are some images from the city, it's where I live in Bremen. And I think the, the presets also work really, really nice here. Maybe we can, let's go again with Malerei too. So let me copy it to the next images, synchronize. And now all these images will be in the same look. And there is not much that I have to do to these images. I think they're kind of uh, nearly finished. And I really like the look of the files here. There's no, there's, there is not really a problem editing these images uh, in, in any direction. I, I mean, all these presets work fine here. Okay, let's move a little bit further. Another another walk around the park. Let's let's choose another preset here. Um, maybe here for, here for example we have ISO thirty two hundred. I wanted to see how good does the image stand when I shoot in higher ISO, so ISO 3200. 30 I think the image looks pretty nice. If we go to edit it right away, right here on the fly, I would probably do it like this. Maybe cut the car out like this. This may, may be an image how I would edit it just on the fly without using presets. And at first sight, I can't see that ISO 3200 was used. Even the dark areas that I pushed up here, I don't see much noise here. So 3200 here at daylight works really, really well. Let's see if we can use our presets here, if the colors and files still work. So let's go to Malerei. And this is also, I think, a really nice image. Let's copy it to all the other images. And now all the images here will be in the same look. I'm really happy with how it looks like and I want to give you an insight into the experience of shooting the Leica camera, the MD, with the 50mm 1.4. Now the camera is not the cheapest and the lens is not the cheapest. There are many cheaper cameras and lenses out there. Uh, if you are looking for any camera, this is not any camera, this is a niche within the niche. It's a camera that doesn't have a display, it only shoots manual focus. So every single image you take has to be on point by your focusing. You have to choose, do I want the lens in focus or do I want my face in focus? And I have to then turn the focus into the direction so I have this or that in focus. It doesn't happen automatically. So you are, you are much more in the photo taking process. You don't use any face detection. There is no eye autofocus. And when your son is running around and jumping, uh, it's a hit and miss, but I think it's way more hit than miss, even when, even when he's running around. Now there are moments like this when he moves pretty fast and you shoot wide open at f1.4 where you miss the focus. But I think most of the time I actually got it got it really, really good on point. So I wanted to, I wanted to see, can I photograph my son who's, who doesn't stand still and who walks around a lot? And I think the images turned out really nice. 
Now, I think you can get kind of these images with any camera um, in any 50 millimeter lens, very similar, but the Leica has a different feeling of taking the images. I think that's where the camera shines. The Leica is not necessarily the best camera for the to get a beautiful image. Many cameras will do that, but the Leica camera gives you a very, very different feeling. The feeling that many cameras will not give you. Shooting with the camera is so different than shooting with anything else. And that is for me the moment or the reason to get a Leica. It's not to get the best image quality because other cameras, more modern cameras have better image quality. But the Leica gives you a feeling when you shoot that most cameras will not give you. I've tried many, many cameras from many, many manufacturers. The last ones I tried are the Canon R6 and R5. And they are beautiful cameras and they give a great image, but the feeling of using those cameras isn't so different from any other Canon camera. And I'm looking for a feeling, I'm, I'm looking for a user experience. And the Leica, the MD, the one without the screen, it gives me a very, very different user experience. It makes taking pictures really, really phenomenal. And the final result I think is pretty good. The, I can turn these files all around. Uh, colors often also look really nice. And if I want, I can edit these files pretty, pretty quickly into any direction I want. So here, for example, I think this is rather dark image, really cold. And I can just with a couple of clicks, I can get a really nice image out of it. Okay, let's go to another high ISO setting. Here we have three images. Um, this was at another wedding at ISO 6400. So pretty high ISO. And now unedited, I think I see a little bit of noise here in the dark areas. Uh, but I think the flower look really nice. And if I now try to edit these files, let's try to choose a preset here. Uh, I think I can use kind of every preset here or nearly all of them. Um, and not all cameras handle ISO 6400 well with presets where you kind of have all these sliders here in different directions. Uh, I think this looks really nice. I copy it now to the next two images. And even at 6400, I think we got some really nice images. When you have the shadow slider here, very high, you see a lot of noise in the dark areas. Uh, but usually I wouldn't put it this high. So when we put it back down, you don't see the noise. So I think it's really usable even to the highest ISO level. And this camera is already a couple of years old. so. I just want to show you that you can actually use this camera at 3200 ISO or when you really have to at 6400 ISO. Okay, I think we're nearly at the end of it. I'm going to show you a couple more images with or off the camera. So you have an idea how the camera looks if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you have no idea how it looks like, let's take a look in a moment. Let me copy and synchronize some of these images again in black and white. Yeah, and that was my insight into editing the Leica M files, especially from the Leica MD with one lens, the 50 millimeter 1.4 Similux lens. I use all my presets. You can find these presets in the description below. I think some work really, really well for landscapes. Many work well for portraiture. It's all with kind of one click like this, Gringo, and then you copy it to all the other images, uh, like this, and then all the images have the same look. And you only have to change small things like exposure or straighten the horizon. But actually with the click of a button, you kind of have a pretty nearly finished result. So here is the camera. Here we got a Hasselblad and the Leica MD. Two very, very special cameras. And let me show you some more images where I am in the image and you see the camera. So this is the camera that I'm talking about. This is the MD 
It looks like a cam, like a Leica camera from the front, but it doesn't have the red dot on it. But from the back, it looks very different because there is no screen. Just a wheel where we can turn to get the ISO. So the ISO you get on the back of the camera when you turn the wheel. You have the shutter, you have the shutter speed here, the dial, and that's kind of it. And then you shoot and you don't see the image you take. You only see these images when you are back on the computer and you turn, you put the SD card in your computer. Now again, these images you see now I took with the Canon 60 Mark II on a tripod with a remote control in my hand. And I photographed myself here, there was no one else there. This works really well, no matter in which direction I look, I'm kind of in focus. And when I when you see this, you may think, I would why would he need a Leica if he can do this? And the Canon cameras are really great for the image. They give me a really great image with face detection, autofocus, but it's not a great joy to use them because it's too easy. I want to be part of the image taking process. I want to be proud of taking images and I want to actually like to uh, you put my hands on the camera to actually have uh, participate in the final image. And with the Leica M cameras and the MD especially, the image taking process really, really feels very, very different. It's not about the final image that looks so much better. That is not necessarily the case. But the feeling I have while I'm taking images is so different and so unique that I would put the extra money on the table for the experience. I wouldn't buy this camera to say I got I want the best image quality. I wouldn't buy this camera to say I want the easiest camera. I want the camera that gives me the greatest feeling, the most special camera for me personally. It's not the camera for doing any job, to go on weddings and shooting events and photographing business portraits. That's not what this camera is for. This is the camera not for the job. This is the camera for the photographer. When he goes out alone, photographing his projects, doing his stuff, doing what he loves, not for the client, but for himself. That's the camera for him. So that's the camera for me. Thank you very much.